But today's story is a little different. We have Jesus as a 12-year-old boy. We don't get many stories of Jesus' childhood in Scripture, and so when they come up, I really like them, and I, I really like preaching on them, so I'm glad that I was able to come here today. Because I often think to myself, what would it be like to be Jesus as a child? Was, was Jesus picked on? Did somebody ever steal the football away from baby Christ? It'd be kind of a, a bad revelation when the time came. Did Jesus ever get sad as a child? Did Mary ever have to comfort Jesus in his bed? These are all questions that remind me of the humanness of Jesus. And that's what it means to celebrate Christmas, isn't it? God with us. God in human form. God that cared so deeply that he sent his child to live with us. And this story today is about a young child. A boy gets separated from his family. This is a story that I'm sure some of you have, have heard recently in one form of an or another. A boy gets separated from his family at the mall. A little boy wanders around at a busy grocery store and frantic parents can no longer find them. Maybe even some of you have experienced stories like this one. In my own childhood, I can vividly remember getting separated from my parents at a local water park. I was wet, I was lost, I was frantic, and I could not find that stack of chairs that we had put all of our belongings to. I had to get a security guard to help me. Regardless of the circumstances, it's a story that brings a lot of anxiety, both for the child and for the parent. Parents become desperate, children become afraid, and that's exactly what we read in Scripture, at least initially. Mary and Joseph are traveling on their pilgrimage to Jerusalem for Passover, a trip that would have been very familiar to early readers of Scripture. And young Jesus was only 12 years old, not terribly young, but not quite an adult either, even by Jewish standards. And they were traveling, and at some point, Mary and Joseph lost track of Jesus. But he was 12, certainly old enough to take care of himself at least for a few hours. They were not afraid at first, but the time continued. Jesus did not return. The caravan continued, and still Jesus did not return. The sun set, and still Jesus did not return. Mary and Joseph started to worry, and they became anxious. They started to look for Jesus among their friends and relatives, but they could not find him. It does not seem like a long period of time when we read it in Scripture, because we can read over it very quickly. But imagine being in their position, not being able to find their 12-year-old son for 12 hours, 24 hours, 48 hours. They began searching with great anxiety and they did not find Jesus for three days. Three days. Three sleepless nights. Three days wondering where their child went. Fear, anxiety, Worry, panic, the list of emotions, the severity of those emotions. Each hour not knowing where their child had been. And then they found Jesus. After three days, they found Jesus in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening and asking questions. Jesus did not look afraid. Jesus did not look anxious. In fact, all who heard Jesus speak to the teachers were amazed at his understanding. Jesus was the Messiah after all. This is the point of our story. Jesus was full of insight and understanding. Jesus 
was a leader among leaders, even at age 12. But that is not the human reaction to our story. Mary and Joseph were not happy. And I'm sure many parents can understand the emotional connection between fear and anger. Once they knew that Jesus was safe, they were angry. Child, why have you treated us like this? Look, your father and I have been searching for you with great anxiety. A message that I've heard from my parents from time to time. But Jesus doesn't respond like a normal child would. Jesus was calm and a little bit confused. Why were you searching for me? Did you not know that I would be in my father's house? Jesus was not anxious. Jesus was not worried. He was calm. He was collected. And our story ends abruptly as many stories and scriptures often do. We don't really know what happens after that. Jesus was able to grow up, as the Bible says, increasing in years and wisdom. But I must wonder how Mary responded in that moment when Jesus was at the temple. Three days. Three full days filled with anxiety to find Jesus, her child, calm and collected in the temple. When this story gets told, we often look to Christ. When we hear this story in worship, we talk about how Christ is wise beyond his years, how Christ was a teacher to teachers. We awe at his majesty and we worship his insight And all of those are good things to reflect upon. But the beautiful part about scripture is that we can look at it from a few different perspectives. And today I'm going to look at the perspective of Mary and Joseph. How did they feel? What might we be able to learn from them as they found Jesus? And when we think about their anxiety, As we think about their fear and their worry as they looked for their lost child, I think some commentators might go a step too far. In looking at the story, some argue that we should not be anxious because Jesus is not anxious. That if we just have enough faith, we wouldn't be afraid. Some take some moralistic understanding from this narrative and walk away with the imperative that we must stay calm under pressure, to be at peace, like Jesus was at peace, that we should not be afraid, that fear is somehow antithetical to faith, that somehow we could be perfect as Jesus was perfect that if we had enough faith, we would never be sad nor angry. But I don't think that's the point of the story. Christ is not anxious, that is true. And Christ is confused at why his parents are angry, that is also true. And Christ seems to think that they should have known where he ended up, even though he did not tell them where he was going. But if any of us could be exactly like Christ, I don't know that there'd be much point in coming to a church service. For those who claim to be Christians, it's not always about being cool, calm, and collected. Because I often wonder how I would feel in the position of Mary or Joseph. For those who think that they can believe their way out of any fear or worry, I wonder what their emotions would be like when their child was missing for three days. I remember being a lost child, and it wasn't three days, it was probably mere minutes. And I remember the fear and anxiety that I had, and it had nothing to do with how much faith I had. It had nothing to do with how much I believed in Christ. And over the years, 
I've built my relationship with Christ. Over the years, I have increased in faith, but I am not cool, calm, and collected all the time. I am not free of anxiety all the time. Even in ministry, there have been times when my emotions have seemed to control some of how I feel. I remember sitting with a family at a hospital visit as they listened to a doctor explain the cancer diagnosis and what the treatment plans would be. And I was anxious, and I was afraid, and I was angry. I remember my first funeral as a pastor when I realized that even if they can teach you how to plan a service, they cannot teach you how to bury a friend. The list could go on and on, and I'm sure many of you can think of examples from your own lives. Fear, anger, sadness, anxiety. Anxiety is part of being human. That is the point of our story. That anxiety is a part of the human experience just as Mary and Joseph experienced it on that day. Joseph was anxious. Mary was anxious. We, at times, can be anxious, and that is okay. The world is full of anxiety. Our lives are full of emotions, and some of them are unpleasant. But as we listen to the good news, we don't always have to follow all of our emotions. Brother Paul gives us some helpful advice that seems to stand the test of time. We might not be able to control how we feel when we feel anxious, when we feel sad, when we feel angry. We might not be able to control how we feel, but we can control what we do. We can control our behavior. The gospel this morning is an invitation to feel what you feel. Experience the emotions that you are wrestling with at this time, especially during the holiday season, because it does us no good to try to control our emotions. But we can control what we do. This is what we read from Colossians. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourself with compassion. There's action here. Paul does not use these words without a reason or by mistake. He does not say feel compassionate. He does not say think compassionate thoughts. He says clothe yourself with compassion. That might sound strange, but other people cannot see our faith by what we think. And sometimes they cannot even see our faith by what we say. Actions truly speak louder than words. And even though we cannot control how we feel all the time, we can control what we do. So we might be anxious, but that does not mean that we can only save ourselves. We have to engage the work of compassion. We might be afraid, but that does not mean that we can forget about feeding the hungry or the stranger. We still have to work out of kindness. We might be angry from time to time. There are times that I even want to lash out at others. That feeling comes up more than it should as you see family around the holidays. But we can still show humility. We cannot control our emotions, but we can control our behavior. These are the actions that Paul invites us with this season. Clothe yourself with compassion. Clothe yourself with kindness, with humility, with meekness, with patience. These are actions as we engage others as the body of Christ. Bear with one another. Bear with one another and above all else, clothe yourself with love. This, brothers and sisters, is the reason that we pray. Not to get rid of our emotions, not to pretend that we aren't feeling what we are feeling, 
but to engage the world with a tangible sign that we know that God is in control. That even if we feel anxious, we can still engage the world because Christ is with us. So take this as an invitation this holiday season. Allow yourself to feel whatever emotions you might come up with. Anxiety, fear, sadness, greed, self-loathing. Feel those feelings. Do not ignore them because that wouldn't help. But don't for once think that your feelings mean that you do not have enough faith. Because your faith is shown by your actions. Sit with those feelings. Pray with those feelings. Do not worry about the feelings that you have. Simply sit with God and think about what you can actually do with God. How you can engage the world with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, patience, and above all else, love. And after that, if all else fails, well, good. We're supposed to fail from time to time. That's what makes us human. That's the reason God came to us, because we cannot go to God all the time. Failing is part of our humanity. If you take nothing else out of this message, please hear this. The good news of Jesus Christ is that we are not called to be perfect. We are called to walk towards Christ. And this is what we celebrate at Christmas, that we might fail, that we might live in a world that is so beyond broken that the King of Kings was born in a manger, but God did not fail. Christ did not fail. The message today is not about removing our anxiety. The message is when we are anxious, we should look towards Christ because Christ was in control. And we cannot expect perfection out of ourselves, but we have a perfect Savior. Christ was in control when his parents were looking for him. What makes us Christians and why we celebrate Christmas is not that we are perfect, but that we follow a perfected Christ. So feel what you feel this holiday season. Embrace your feelings, whatever they may be. But better yet, share those feelings with others. Let others know what you are struggling with. Share your fear and anxiety with this community of Christ. Your emotions are not a sin. But each and every day, remember to get up. Remember to continue walking down this path that God has set before us, and we continue to follow Christ together. And our actions, our tangible actions in the world, do much more than what we think and what we say. And so we continue to follow Christ together. Amen.